Welcome back everyone, and I'm Serge. I'm Cern. And now we're gonna be talking about the two paralumbar sites. Let's start with the right paralumbar site, Dr. Boysen. Okay, and we're gonna actually start with the right paralumbar site. We're gonna show you, and uh, again, Penny's in a lateral position. That's the position we're gonna do the demonstration in. Keeping in mind, we scan the patient in the position they're most comfortable. Mm -hmm. So to find that paralumbar site, this is actually one that a lot of people struggle with sometimes. Penny is in left lateral recumbency, so this is the right kidney that we're gonna go and access now. Often what I'll try to do this, I'll follow those ribs up, so I'm palpating that caudal uh, rib site here, and I'll palpate that up until my finger is pushed out by the sub-lumbar muscles, Dr. Shalhoub. And that's often a really nice place to start with. We separate the fur so we can see the skin, we apply alcohol at that location, we're gonna put the probe right on that location where we can see the uh, skin, and we'll start long axis. Now, Often on the right side, that kidney is gonna hide behind that last rib. So mm -hmm. I'm scanning behind the last rib and I can't quite see it. So it's gonna be located probably a rib space cranial. And I'll actually jump ahead one rib here, Dr. Schlub. And when I do that, look at that lovely kidney that we see now sitting between the 12th and 13th intercostal spaces. So again, remember when you're scanning for the kidney, you may have to actually, especially on the right side, come between the ribs as opposed to scanning and trying to find it caudal to that last rib. Once we see that uh, kidney, Dr. Schlub, we're gonna actually fan all the way off one side, we'll fan all the way off the other side with the kidney in long axis. So that is definitely something we wanna do there, Dr. Schlub. And what are we looking for when we're doing this, Dr. Schlub? Well, like at every other site, Dr. Boysen, we wanna look for free abdominal fluid at this site. So that's part of the fanning. Dr. Boysen, there's something else we can look for here, which is free abdominal air. Absolutely, so our patient is again, think about patient positioning, the pathology we're looking for. If it's air that we're looking for, air rises as opposed to fluid that falls. So we're gonna look to the most gravity independent regions when we look for that free air. So we're gonna identify that uh, peritoneal lining and we're just gonna fan and move along that peritoneal lining and look for the enhanced peritoneal stripe sign and reverberation artifact. You'll have to watch one of the lectures that talk about that to be able to see that in our patients that have uh, free air in the abdomen. But that's what we're gonna do and look at this site as well. Free air in the abdomen by identifying that peritoneal lining, which you can easily see here, the kidney is tucked up against that peritoneal lining. Mm -hmm. Once we've done long axis, Dr. Schlub, we wanna go into? Short axis, Dr. Boysen. So you rotate that probe 90 degrees and we know that the kidneys are difficult to scan, especially between the ribs and especially this right kidney because again, it's tucked in between the two ribs. So it's a little hard to see that one. And there you go, you have a nice short axis image there, Dr. Boysen. So we're gonna ask those same two questions. Do we have free abdominal fluid? Do we have free abdominal air at this site? All right, so we're gonna actually uh, fan all the way off in short axis, and then uh, we'll fan off the caudal pole. We'll fan off the cranial pole, Dr. Schlub. Make sure we don't see that free fluid as you alluded to, all the way off, exactly. And then when we fan off the uh, kidney on the right side, we'll usually hit the liver. So that's the liver that we're starting to see mm -hmm. here come in. And there you see that the kidney's just tucked into that uh, hepatorenal fossa there. All right, Dr. Boysen. Well, another question, binary question we can ask here. This is for cats. Two studies show that general practitioners, people doing point of care ultrasound can ask, is there significant renal pelvic dilation? And this is really cool for that cat coming in with severe azotemia, and you don't know if it's renal or post-renal, you can get this image, oh, beautiful image you have there, Dr. Boys, and this Pac-Man image here that we have here with the renal papilla and that Pac-Man shape there of the crescent there, Dr. Boys, and we could see that if there is a distance between the papilla and that Pac-Man of greater than 13 millimeters, then we have a ureteral obstruction. In cats coming in with GI signs and azotemia, a great uh, thing to look for, and there's lots of evidence for that now out of the Royal Veterinary College. So that's something we look for in short axis. Lots of different ways we can look for that renal pelvic dilation. We like to do it in short axis, and you can see that here. It's a little harder on the right kidney than the left, but we do have a nice view of that renal papilla here, and you can look for that renal pelvic dilation. So that's something you can do in short axis. It's the easiest way we find to do it. Uh, lots of evidence out there now, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So binary question, is the renal pelvis in short axis in cats greater than 13 millimeters, yes or no, which is indicative of a ureteral obstruction? So what else can we look for then at this right paralumbar site, Dr. Schlug? Well, Dr. Boysen, just like we looked at the stomach for ileus, we can go find the duodenum or duodenum and ask ourselves that same question. Is there GI contraction at the duodenum, yes or no? 
And what we want to do then, we want to actually fan off of or sweep off of that kidney and long axis. We're going to come down until we find the thickest wall of the uh, small intestine, and that's usually the duodenum. We can start to see that coming in right here. Mm -hmm. We do have some other loops of intestine in here. We have some colon in here, which is a thinner walled uh, intestine, but we can see the loops of the duodenum here. And we're just going to actually put our probe here. And again, we're going to watch to see if we have any GI contractions or motility here that helps us determine if we have ileus present or not. Correct, Dr. Boysen. So we're looking again for you break dancing in there. And if we see that, we know we do not have generalized ileus. All right. So, and again, the easiest way to do that, find that kidney and long axis and just then sweep to the medial side and look for the largest wall of the intestine. Now, and we see some nice in luminal contractions there in uh, pennies that tells us that we do not have generalized ileus. And, uh, we can see that nicely here in the uh, short axis. I turn that in the long axis there, and oh, mm. there we go, Dr. Look at that nice intraluminal contraction that we have in Penny, ruling out generalized ileus at that right paralumbar site by picking up the duodenum. Good job, Penny. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at those contractions.